In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can update your quadcopter to the latest release of the Betaflight firmware. The first question you should ask yourself before you do anything is, do you actually need to update the firmware that's on your quadcopter? My opinion is that if your quadcopter and everything else is working exactly the way you need it to work, then you don't need to update your firmware. However, if the new firmware that's available either improves flight performance in some way or adds features that you have been wanting or are completely new and you want to try out, then that might be a reason to update your firmware. Having said all of that, what you're going to need in order to do this is of course the flight controller, whether it's loose like this or already in a quadcopter. You'll need a USB cable that will connect to it and a computer with an internet connection so you can download the most recent version of Betaflight Configurator. So if we take a look here, we can see that on the Betaflight website, which you can always get here at GitHub, and it's at the Betaflight Configurator page, we use the configurator to flash firmware to the flight controller and also to do the setup. And so when we're looking at these, there are basically two versions that we could choose from. We have one here that's called a release candidate, and you can see that it's labeled as a pre-release version of the firmware. We're just going to scroll down here a little bit further. Here's one that is labeled as latest, and you'll see it's Betaflight Configurator 10.9. So what is the difference between this Betaflight latest and the Betaflight pre-release? This Betaflight Configurator here that is labeled latest will allow you to install firmware up to the latest stable release of the Betaflight firmware. After that, the ones that are labeled pre-release are versions that let you put in or let you install firmware for the upcoming releases that they're developing right now. So there can be bugs in them. There may be things that are partially developed but not quite finished yet. Basically, it's a functional but sometimes incomplete piece of firmware. Whether you choose to use the, the normal one, which is the latest release, or you are choosing the most cutting edge newest release, that is entirely your choice. Whichever you choose, you will find at the bottom of all of these things here, a place labeled assets. And what you will need to do is simply download the particular version that you need for your computer, whether it's Windows or Mac OS or Linux, and then install it onto your computer. Having done that, we can then switch over to the Betaflight configurator itself and actually get into the process of updating the firmware on the flight controller. So let's switch over to that right now. So what we have here is the Betaflight configurator. I've just launched it from my desktop and, and it's running here. Is first of all, we're going to connect the flight controller through the USB to the computer. You can see here that now in my connection list, I have a new COM port. Mine is listed as COM3 and you see it says Betaflight STM. Just choose the particular one on your computer that would match whatever your flight controller is. And then what we're going to do first before we flash the firmware is we're going to do a backup. That way, if anything goes wrong in the process, we can always have a version that we can fall back to and reinstall on the flight controller to get it working again. It's a really simple process. Simply connect and it should load up like this. And the only thing we need to do is come down to where it says presets in these tabs. We'll click presets. And right here is a place where we can save a backup. It's as simple as that. So we will come here, we will save a backup. It'll take a moment and then it will give you the opportunity to save your full backup. So just choose a place where you want to save it. Give it a name that is meaningful to you. So I'm going to just call this here my SAF because that is the build that I'm making. Seven inch default. And so that was the default firmware and settings that came with this flight controller from the factory. So I'm going to now save that. So now that we've got the backup, 
we can actually go and flash the firmware. So we're going to come over and you can choose either the update firmware or flash firmware, doesn't matter. It will bring you to this particular page. And on this particular page is where we're going to, excuse me, tell the configurator what flight controller we have so it knows which firmware to download and configure for us. And we're going to tell it the particular configuration that we want for this flight controller. The show release candidate is what allows you to see the release candidate versions. There is a further one here that are called development versions, and those are really under development. And I typically would not recommend using that. So release or release candidate. And then what you can do is you can actually click this button here that says auto detect. And you can see that for me, it figured out that my board was an F405 and that the most current firmware available is this RC5 Release Candidate 2. But it will also let me put in the non-release candidates. That gives us the option, right? Release or Release Candidates. You choose the firmware that you find will be comfortable for you to use. If you are not sure about the flight controller that you have, there's kind of two ways that you can check it out and find out which board you have. One way is actually just to look straight up here in the logs. And what you can see is that right away, it's telling you the board. That board in this case is the SPBE, Speedy BF405 V4. And that's the information that you can use when you're trying to choose which flight controller and flight controller firmware you would want for your flight controller. Now, I said there were two ways. The second way to do that is to actually go into the CLI. And if you type just the word version, you will see here in the board manufacturer is listed again right here, Speedy B. And the board name is right there, Speedy B F405 V4. Of course, yours will say whatever yours happens to be. But if you're trying to find out which flight controller model you have, this is an easy way to do it. If for some reason the auto detect did not find your board, you will just simply need to click on the list. You can type in the name. So just for example, if you had a Matek board, you could type in Matek or Matek, sorry. And then you would see the list of those particular ones. Now, what we're going to come down here and do are choose the different features that we want in our firmware. This is a fairly recent thing with Betaflight where it allows us to sort of build the firmware in the cloud that, that we need for our quad and then take out the things that we're not going to be using. The radio protocol is Crossfire and that's because I'm using Express LRS in this particular build, but you would choose whichever is appropriate for you and they're all listed here. Okay, so I'm using Crossfire, I'll choose that. And then the options here are the things that you would like to have available to you in your quadcopter setup. Now I'm building a seven inch freestyle quad here and it is going to have a GPS on it. So I'll include that. It's going to have an OSD on-screen display. Now I only use analog video still. And so I just use the SD. However, if you were somebody who flies with HD, you would choose the OSD with HD. I have a video transmitter on there, so I make sure that's selected as well. And whichever other items you feel you may need. Now I'm going to remove this HD part because I don't need it. Telemetry is included because it's crossfire and I'm going to be using the D-Shot motor protocol. And so those are the settings that will be appropriate for my quadcopter setup. You simply need to choose the ones that would be appropriate for you and your quadcopter now, setup. What we're going to do next is come down and load the firmware online. And as we do that, it's going to actually do a cloud build. It took it no time to do it in this case. And you can see that it's loaded that firmware online. And now all we need to do is flash the firmware. You need to understand that when you do this, it's going to completely erase everything that was on there and overwrite it with the new firmware. That's why we made the backup before. So in case anything goes wrong, it will allow us to go back to the previous version. As you're doing this, Configurator needs to reboot your flight controller into what's called DFU mode. Most boards today will do that automatically. 
However, if that's not happening for you, just simply look at your flight controller and you should have a button on it, something like this, that you can push from the side and hold down as you restart the flight controller. And that will put it into DFU mode. Now, sometimes it's a button on the side like this. Sometimes it's a button that you simply need to push down. That's what you will need to do if you have any issue when you click this flash firmware button. And in fact, the configurator will pop up a message and tell you what to do. I'm pretty sure mine's going to have no issues here. Let's find out. We'll just flash the firmware. It says create a backup. It's giving you the warning right now, but we already did that. No, you, if you didn't create your backup right now, it will be exactly the same as before. Because we did it before, we can ignore this risk. And you can see now it's erasing what was on there. And then it will switch over to doing the programming. Now, depending on your computer, your USB connection, and also the chip on your flight controller, this can take a little bit of time. Not too, too long. Two, three minutes would be kind of the longest you might expect. Just give it time to finish its job. That's it. You can see it says right here, the programming was successful. And if we connect up here, you can see that it's completely new firmware. It's giving me the warning that says this is not configured or set up at all. And that's true because we completely wiped out all the settings that were on there before. And now we have to set it up again from scratch. Depending on what you have done, it is possible to sometimes re-import some of the settings from your previous build, but that's not always the case. So be very careful about doing that. In the end, I think that should help very much with understanding the basic idea of flashing a version of Betaflight firmware to your flight controller. I hope you found this video helpful and that you were able to update your Betaflight firmware successfully. Appreciate that you took the time to watch. Until the next time, take care and safe flying.